So now let's switch back to our retail environment where we'll be using the constant ambient compensator. Now in this scenario, we have constant background music playing, so we need to constantly adjust it according to the crowd noise. So what we're gonna do is we're going to digitally subtract the program material from what the ambient microphone is hearing. That way we can listen to just the crowd noise to determine whether or not the program material should be louder or not. Now this is a more processor intensive component, so it's gonna be using more of your digital processing power. So, we go to Audio Components, Dynamics, and drag a continuous ambient compensator into our schematic. Let's just delete the gated one, and we'll rewire our program material and background noise to our new compensator. You may notice that we have a third pin here, the reference pin. The reference pin represents what the loudspeakers in your room are broadcasting. That way the compensator knows what to attempt to delete from the microphone input. Now, we could simply wire our output signal to the reference input. More likely, you would first go on to some sort of equalizer or maybe a peak limiter. Some sort of DSP would be happening before it makes it back to your compensator. You want to take the audio signal from as late in your path as possible, in fact just before it's sent to the amplifier, to use as your reference signal. But in this example, we're just going to route it right back to itself. Another thing to keep in mind is that you'll want to normalize the input gain of your program material before it gets to the compensator. If you're using an ambient compensator to control the level of your background music, it can't do a very good job if some of your music tracks have very low peaks like this one and others have high peaks, like this. You may want to use a component called the Automatic Gain Control, which will take an audio signal and control its overall dynamic range. You can specify your desired output gain, and it will conform the audio signals it receives to that target gain. That way, when you play a softer track, it could boost it up a bit, or take a louder track and attenuate it down. Now, all your music tracks will have consistent levels so that the ambient compensator will be more effective. Alright, let's go back to the continuous ambient compensator and let's take a look at its properties panel. You can see now that you have an audio bandwidth option. You can choose to ignore higher frequency material since most background noise is pretty low frequency. This will also let you save processing power. Relative venue size, this will help the compensator model your room to remove the program material. If it's not doing good enough of a job, you may want to raise this number. It's an arbitrary number between 1 and 10. Just give your best estimate as to how big you think your venue is. If it's a closet, you're probably 1. If you're a giant amphitheater, you might be a 10. Because different venues absorb and reflect noise in different ways, this lets you model how your program material is being distorted by the time it's picked up once again by your microphone. Now another way to help tune this is in the control panel. We're going to take a look at that now, but let's go ahead and run this to the core so that we can see the control panel in action. Alright, so we'll zoom out. Now this looks a lot like the gated ambient compensator's control panel, but with a few differences. You see over here in the detector, we have a mic speaker distance knob. Here, you need to input the distance from the microphone to the nearest loudspeaker, represented in meters. Now remember that the continuous ambient compensator is only as good as the placement of your microphone. For instance, uh, if you were to install this system into a coffee shop, you wouldn't want to put the microphone right next to the coffee grinder, because every time the barista grinds a new cup of coffee, the compensator is going to think that the room is suddenly filled with loud growling monsters. It's going to raise the program material quite a bit to compensate. And then everyone else who's in the coffee shop but not next to the coffee grinder would be wondering why the music is so loud. So when you place your microphone, make sure you put it in a place that best represents the actual source of your ambient noise. Finally, the program reduction meter shows how much of the program material has been successfully removed from the mic input line. Now this gray means it's doing a pretty good job. Once you have this fine-tuned, you should be able to mostly or completely eliminate the program material from the mic line, allowing the detector to listen only to the background noise in the room without being affected by the program material that is actually playing. So let's see this in action. Just like the other compensator, you can raise the background noise, but unlike the other one, it adjusts the amount of gain that's being applied to your program material while it, the program material is playing. You can raise the background noise, lower the background noise, and even though this program material is still active, it will adjust the gain automatically.
Now, there is one final benefit to all of this, and that is the pin over here. It's labeled ambient. This represents the recovered ambient level of the room. Basically, it's the background noise with the program material deleted from it. You can listen to this feed to hear strictly the crowd noise in a room full of blaring music, which means maybe you can use it to listen to conversations that people are having when they think no one can hear them because the music's so loud. Does it really work like magic like that? I guess you have to find out for yourself. Thank you, we'll see you next time.